recording. Okay, welcome to Robotics 2. So I just want to share one good news. Uh, we have completed so far nine chapters. So, and we have uh, two more weeks. So four more classes. So I think we should be able to finish chapter 10, 11, and 12. So pretty much we will finish the entire textbook. Uh, so that is the good news. And I think you have one assignment that is due, which is a very simple assignment on GPS and IMU-based sensors. And then the last exercise is mostly self-study. So you will have to finish those MATLAB exercises um, and get the certificates and then upload those in Canvas to get full credit. So we are doing quite well. So what I want to do in today's class is see first and foremost, see if you have any questions on the material that we have discussed in last class. Uh, if there are no questions, then I will dive deep into this uh, design models for guidance, that's chapter nine, and kind of give you a, a low level uh, understanding, try to explain how these work in actual practice. So before I begin, let me see if there are any questions. Any questions on the material so far? Okay. All right. So let's talk about what we discussed in last class. I kind of gave you an overall view of what we are trying to do and explained some of those equations. Now in today's class, I would like to dissect each and every equation that we discussed in last class and understand what it means in terms of physical parameters and how would you implement that in an autopilot. And this exercise may seem trivial, but it is important because if you are trying to design an autopilot, you can't have a general purpose autopilot that works for everything. You want to design an autopilot that is capable of doing a particular task at a particular time. Now, the next chapter is going to be about a path following. So this autopilot and the, the dynamic and kinematic models for guidance that we talk about in today's class, uh, which we briefly looked at in last class, are super important when you want autopilot to follow a certain path. So if you look at what we have studied so far, we looked at the function of the low level function of the autopilot. So what is this autopilot supposed to do? Autopilot is supposed to stabilize. Now, so, so stabilization. Stabilization is a very important function of the autopilot, but it is a low level function. What that means is you don't want your aircraft to dive down. So you don't want your aircraft to flip, flop, or dive down. In other words, if I want to specify what the stabilization is, stabilization is control of theta and control of uh, phi, because you don't want the aircraft pitching up all of a sudden, you don't want your aircraft pitching down or you don't want your aircraft to be in spin clockwise or counterclockwise. So you don't want spin or you don't want dive. So autopilot somehow should stabilize. And how would it stabilize? For stabilization, it will use the linear models that we talked about in the last lesson. So we talked about the rule stabilization, we talked about the yaw stabilization, 
and what we want to make sure is in the presence of wind load in presence of disturbances the autopilot is able to control the control surfaces so that the aircraft stabilizes so so if you look at the embedded system architecture so here is what usually happens so if you look at an autopilot any autopilot or a flight controller you would notice there are some pwm ports so these are sort of pwm ports and then the way you configure the autopilot each pwm port is connected to a servo and this servo could be controlling aileron which means it will control roll it could be controlling the elevator it could be controlling pitch and it could be controlling uh, the rudder so it could be controlling yaw on top of it autopilot will control the thrust so it will be controlling a dc motor or some type of motor or maybe an internal combustion engine small engine and then inside the first and fundamental function of autopilot is control the speed so this is controlling the speed control the roll angle control the pitch angle so that the aircraft is stabilized so i just want to clarify what do i mean by stabilization stabilization means when the aircraft is trim autopilot will try to keep the aircraft in trim position so that is what i mean by stabilization so this is the first and fundamental function of autopilot keep the uav trim so if you are in a level flight make sure that autopilot is controlling the speed roll and uh, pitch angle so that the aircraft is um, in the level flight if aircraft is climbing up for some reason if the aircraft is programmed to climb up then autopilot would want to make sure that aircraft is climbing up at that particular angle because what's going to happen is under the wind loading Uh, or under some disturbances the aircraft may oscillate or aircraft could have some stability issues but autopilot st should stabilize that is the first and foremost function of autopilot many a times you don't need how common is pwm yeah p so okay so pwm control what it means is basically it is sort of a digital signal to control servo so servos are based on the pwm pwm is the ratio of pulse width so if you look at the pulse width and pid control at the end you can implement the pid control in an analog uh, setting or in a digital setting but at the end what you do is you take that pid control and implement that so that the actuator is control either using analog input or digital input so what do i mean by analog input think about analog input is like a potentiometer so if you want to control let me give an example say if i want to control the speed of the motor using a pid control what pid control would do is pid control would adjust the voltage and in the case so this is a pure analog control if you want to control the 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 servo then what it will do is it will control the pwm so this is digital so you can have pid control uh, implemented on an analog uh, implementation or on the digital implementation all right now so once assume that our uav is stabilized and trimmed so if you look at these hobby based 
uh, quadcopters or hobby uh, based uh, flight stabilizers they are super duper cheap and the only purpose of those stabilizers is to make sure that the aircraft if it's a quadcopter maintains the roll stability and pitch stability and it maintains the altitude so if you look at a quadcopter and you can buy a very cheap quadcopter from amazon or maybe you can buy a quadcopter from ebay you will notice and you can get those for as low as 10 bucks so if you are stabilizing that quadcopter by means of a smartphone what the inside microcontroller does there is an accelerometer and accelerometer depending upon with what is the roll uh, reading and pitch reading of the from the accelerometer it tries to maintain roll is equal to 0 and pitch is equal to 0 this is the very fundamental function that quadcopter does the other thing what it can do is it if it has a vision sensor or it could have a pressure sensor then it would maintain the altitude from the the ground so basically it will measure uh, in terms of pressure differential or it could have a vision based or camera based system so it can actually see where the the aircraft or the quadcopter is so this is what all its low level functionality is doing in the case of aircraft aircrafts cannot hover at one place so the basic function of autopilot is making sure that aircraft does not stall so which means it has some sort of air speed that we commanded which means you are supplying current a correct amount of thrust so that this air speed is maintained and the aircraft is in trimmed condition so you don't want your aircraft to go down you don't want your aircraft all of a sudden to go up there is it's difficult to maintain the yaw stability but sometimes you can have some sort of compass to maintain the yaw stability so let's so first and foremost function of the autopilot and this is i need to clarify this uh, very clearly so the first and foremost autopilot autopilot should stabilize and stabilization is clearly means controlling the air speed controlling the phi and controlling theta in the case of fixed wing aircraft now the next question that comes in the picture is we want autopilot to direct aircraft from point a to point b and if it's a car if autopilot is used in the car problem is not that difficult because you know the car is not going to pitch up car this is not going to roll so you don't want car to roll you don't want car to pitch you want car to go in the straight direction or if it's turning you want to control the yaw but in the case of aircraft the problem is slightly different so what you want is you want aircraft to go from point a to point b and this path could be a straight line path line path it could be a circular path or it could be a combination combination of straight lines and circle or it could be orbit following so you would specify an orbit and that uav will follow the orbit so this is discussed in detail in chapter 10 which is coming next and then this combination and the path planning is discussed in chapter 11 which is on the path manager so this is path manager and 
the last chapter is chapter 12 is vision based guidance which is chapter 12 and if possible i would like to discuss these three chapters please understand there is no project on these chapters but if you really want to go and design an autopilot all the way uh, from start to the end you need to understand all this and here is an exercise if you guys want you can do in summer you can purchase a pick hawk which is an open source pick or uh, pick hawk you can actually do all this in matlab on your computer so you can do all this stabilization orbit following all that for a particular airframe and then actually flash the pick hawk and implement that in an actual airframe so if you look at the announcement I have um, added a webinar that actually shows how you can do all this inside the MATLAB and then burn this MATLAB as a hex file or C code into a Peacock autopilot and imp implement this Peacock autopilot with an airframe and how to make it work. If you look at the commercially available Peacock, there are standard airframes like you have VTAIL, you have standard, then you have Delta and so on. So what they have, what open source community has done, they have implemented all these airframe plane models for these different, different airframes. So those libraries are available for the direct use. So if you don't want to do this exercise of programming the autopilot with your custom model, then if your plane or aircraft is a quadcopter or a rover or uh, some sort of a standard configuration plane, yeah, you can flash it with C code. So as a matter of fact, you can pick a code. Pick a uses something called as Mavlink. So you can use that for wireless communication between the computer and the autopilot and you can flash it with C code. I was involved 10, 15 years ago, I was involved in the very basic uh, implementation, which is called as Ardu Pilot. So Ardu Pilot, uh, this is something that we worked on in 2008. This is the Arduino, Arduino based autopilot. And what you can do is it all the code was written using the Arduino IDE. And if you are interested, I may have that autopilot code. So I can share that with you. It's a very uh, straightforward, very nicely written code. And a lot of uh, open source community students worked on that and, and helped it develop. And then gradually that code migrated into a better platform uh, and into Peacock. So, but if you look at Peacock, Peacock is an uh, ARM a Cortex processor. It's a dual processor design uh, with built-in flash. So all that uh, as the processing power, more and more processing power was available, uh, the community migrated to uh, a better algorithm. Uh, code could be on GIT, uh, Git. I don't know if the very super duper old code is on GitHub, but you can check. So the initial development of autopilot was based on Arduino, and that's why it was called Ardu Pilot. It was Arduino Autopilot. Anyway, uh, there might be codes available that implement uh, flight control systems using Arduino. It's not difficult if you think about it, what it is, is you have an Arduino. 
and you are controlling PWM for servos and you are controlling uh, either a relay or some sort of analog input to the motor control, the motor control. And what you have is you have some sort of SD card or flash memory device that you can read the data and potentially write the data and you can interface your sensors, accelerometers and everything directly onto the Arduino. So it, it was a lot of fun by the way. Anyway, so what it means is as we su successfully stabilize the plane, we want to move on to the second task is how do we get plane from point A to point B? Now this problem, let's break down into small, small pieces. So, and again, this problem can be formulated for different uh, uh, profiles. Say sometimes what you want is you want your plane to loiter. So you, you provide a point, you provide certain radius and that plane is going to loiter at certain altitude and at certain airspeed. Sometimes what you want is you want return to base. So which means the plane is over here and something happens, say battery level drop below 50%. And then what you want is you want autopilot on its own to approximately trace this path back and go back to the original location. Sometimes what you want is you want your autopilot to auto land. So what it means, it, it needs to go down, come at that this level and somehow go uh, level down. All these are one or the other variation of this path planning problem. And what we discussed in last class, I'm gonna explain this once again in the context of how would you design this path. So let me, let me tell you, how do, I, how do I envision path? So, so the basic problem is this, you have a point A, you have a point B. So you have a point A, you have a point B. And you want your aircraft to go from point A to point B. And typically what you have is, you have some sort of path on the ground, but aircraft needs to fly, when it needs to fly from point A to point B. For the sake of simplicity, let's assume that this path is a straight line path. Now, if it's a straight line path, here is what I want to do. I want to divide this into multiple small, small segments. And when I say small, small segments, imagine that these segments are very, very close to each other. So super duper close. In other words, what I want to say is, I need to know what is the PN, PE, and PD. In other words, what is the position in the north coordinate, position east position, and altitude, H, at point A. Next point is, say, point A1. I want to know what is the value of PN, what is the value of PE, and what is the value of H at A1? All the way to this point B where I need to know PN, PE, and H. And we are assuming a straight line of path. So what it means is I can potentially use a simple interpolation that can take me from point A to point B. But in reality, your path will be a very simple straight line it would be something complex. So at minimum, here is what I want to do. So what I want to do is given, and this is a, a statement and we'll, derive, we'll write the differential equation that codifies this statement, given position at A, what would be find, find, position at A1. 
Now, one important piece that I want to add here is I would add time. And why this time comes in the picture? Because aircraft has some finite speed. It has some air speed. So somehow, if I know the value of the speed, if I multiply by time, if I know the initial position, I should be able to get the final position. Now, what it means is for the sake of simplicity, I want to write, rewrite this equation for some control conditions. So think about it. Uh, imagine for the sake of discussion, imagine that I want aircraft to follow a straight line path with no elevation. If I want to follow the aircraft with a straight line path with no elevation, that means my flight path angle gamma is going to be zero. Recollect, what is flight path angle? Flight path angle is nothing but the angle made by the aircraft and chi angle is the course angle, which is this. So what it means is if it's just a straight line, I, I don't worry about it. My chi is zero, my gamma is zero. But if my, my aircraft is following some sort of weird profile, I would have a non-zero gamma and I would have a non-zero chi. So what it means is I can write the expression for the path in terms of gamma and chi. So this is an important question and let's take a minute to think about it. What do I mean by finding in terms of theta, I mean gamma and chi? Let's say that I'm going to fix my airspeed. I'm gonna say my VA is one meters per second, okay? which means my aircraft, somehow I have written a control loop in such a way that after stabilization, what my autopilot is doing, after stabilization, autopilot is saying theta is equal to zero. Uh, autopilot is saying phi, uh, psi and phi is equal to zero. And it is going to maintain VA is equal to one, meters per second. Now, at this point, I want to define the path. Please understand gamma and chi, these are path variables. So what it means is if I specify the value of instantaneous gamma, and if I specify the value of instantaneous chi, I can find out the path the aircraft can take. And let me explain this as a simple example. So if I consider this as the airspeed, if I consider this as the airspeed, I can find out the component of airspeed in the north, east, and down direction. What I can do is I can find the component of the airspeed in north, east, and down direction. And we looked at this. So if I want to find out and this is very important, so please pay attention. If I want to find out the velocity of the aircraft in the north direction, if I want to find out the velocity of the aircraft in east direction, and if I want to find out the velocity of the aircraft in the down direction. So I need to write this down. This is velocity in north direction. And this is all inertial, okay? velocity in east direction and velocity in down direction. In other words, just for clarification, this expression can be written as PN dot, PE dot and H dot. So, so recollect the, the basic problem is we are starting with the given position at A. So P, N, P, E, and H at A are known. If I know the velocity P, N dot, P, E dot, H dot, then I can clearly find out 
the corresponding position at A1. It is as simple as velocity multiplied by time plus initial position gives me the final position. So this equation can be written as Vg, and this is very important, Vg cosine chi cosine gamma sine chi cosine gamma minus sine gamma. And you can easily recollect that what this is, is I'm trying to find out the component of VA in the dip of chi. So this is VA, VA cosine of gamma. And this guy is nothing but this. And this guy, so this guy, vertical component is VA sine of gamma. But since it is in the negative direction, you can see that this component is over here. Now, if I want to resolve uh, this component, VA cosine gamma in the direction uh, around chi, then please understand, I can write this will be cosine and this will be sine. So depending upon how you measure chi, you will get positive or negative answers. So what it means is finally G, and let's recollect what is VG. VG is the ground speed. Now, some of you may ask me, wow, we were, a moment ago we were talking about the airspeed. Where did this ground speed come from? Now, ground speed is important because we are following a path and this path is assumed to be on the ground in the inertial coordinate frame. That's why when I'm actually trying to derive this expression, when I'm trying to find out the value of pn dot, pe dot, pd dot, I am using vg. But the good news is we know the relationship between the ground speed, which is vg, is equal to air speed that the aircraft has plus wind speed. So ground speed this is air speed this is wind speed. So with this equation we can easily rewrite the expression for VG in terms of VA and ground speed. Now other thing that I want you to keep in mind is many a times when you are declaring path, when you are saying that you want to move to point B, you do not specify that path in terms of airspeed. Here is the reason why. Because airspeed, the instantaneous airspeed changes depending upon the wind condition. But what you want to make sure is no matter what the airspeed is, you are going from point A to point B at that particular ground speed. And this is an important concept. So I will repeat again. When you are defining path, when path is defined, it is in terms of north, east, down, inertial coordinates, and ground speed. Now, autopilot, what needs to do is, autopilot needs to get this information, get the actual values from the sensors and adjust the airspeed in such a way that this particular ground speed 
is maintained. So what happens here is Pn dot, Pe dot, H dot is equal to Va cosine of uh, psi cosine of gamma a sine of psi cosine of gamma a sine of gamma a. Now, what we assume is chi is equal to psi. This is a basic assumption that can be used. And the reason this is implemented in this way, and I'll tell you a reason why in just a second, plus omega n, omega e minus omega d. This is the wind speed. So at this point, the question is, can we find pn dot, p dot, and h dot? And the answer to that question is yes, because VA is commanded. So you want your autopilot to stay first and foremost stabilize. And the fundamental purpose of stabilization is maintain certain airspeed. Now, chi is actually the the angle, course angle. But for UAVs, especially UAVs flying at slow speeds, chi can be approximated with heading. And this heading or yaw can be measured with sensors. So if you have an IMU or if you have a compass, then or if you have a GPS, you can find out the value of yaw. Now, there is this uh, flight path angle. You will realize in the next iteration, this flight path angle can be approximated to pitch angle. So what you can do is for solution purposes, you can uh, approximate flight path angle as the pitch angle. So can be approximated to pitch angle. So I just want to tell you what we have done. So we have something called as the path definition. So this is the path that we want our UAV to take. Now, what I want to do is I want to translate the variables that are defining path in terms of the variables that UAV can measure in terms of the so plant definition. I'm expressing this in terms of states that UAV can measure, estimate. Now, what is the biggest advantage of this? So next thing that some of you may ask me this question, what about WN, WE, and WD? What about winds? To be honest with you, it's not easy to uh, measure wind speed. But what you can do is you can use the wind model. Remember the MATLAB block for the wind model? So, so you can actually use a wind model and that can take the input of where that craft is, latitude, longitude, altitude, and it can give you the approximate values and actually airspeed, and it can give you the approximate values of the wind. So there are different wind models that are inside the autopilot but if you are using an autopilot uh, that is not very sophisticated, 
uh, wind mod wind is typically ignored and then you can actually compensate that by uh, increasing the value of VA. So that is done internally inside the autopilot. So the path definition is now converted into the state definition that UAV can measure. And what is finally coming out of it? At the end of the day, it is giving me PN dot, PE dot, and H dot. And what is the purpose of this? So I have initial PN, I have initial PE, I have initial H. This is initial. Plus, if I have instantaneous PN dot, instantaneous PE dot, instantaneous H dot, if I multiplied by delta T, and please note this delta T is usually very small. So this is small. Then I can find out its final or the current position, PE and H. So this is initial position, this is final position. And these initial and final positions are super duper close to each other. So this is the initial and this is the final. And this loop is continuously running inside the autopilot. Now the next quick question is, what if our final position, so we are looking at path. So here is the thing. I know to go from point A to point B, I need to go at, maybe I need to follow this path. This is the most ideal path that my UAV needs to take. What happens if I find out my final position that I computed from this expression is away from the ideal position? What if I find that my final position that I found out is away from the desired position? So this is desired and this is actual. Which means something is incorrect. Yeah. So think about the final, just to show you significant de deviation, I chose a point in the middle, but that means the position at A1 is not on the path that mathematically we calculated. So what happens then? In that particular case, you would use your kinematic and dynamic models to make corrections so that you can actually go to the, you can actually in the next iteration, you can go close to the desired path point. And this is an important statement. I need to write this down. So here is the question. The question is, what happens, what happens if actual PN, PE and H is different from PN, PE and H, which is desired. And believe it or not, this becomes sort of control problem. And you can use some sort of PID control to tune. So what you do is, in that case, you use your guidance model. To make corrections. Now, what do I mean by making using guidance model? So guidance model is going to tell you what should be your instantaneous position. So this is going to tell you what should be your instantaneous position. And for this instantaneous position, what should be your state variables? So what should be 
your state variables. So for an example, if you want to go from follow this path, then what you have is you're following this approach and this is giving you the actual values. But then you want to actually follow, you want your system or your aircraft to take these values. Now, clearly there is a difference, but your guidance model would tell you what should be your roll pitch or the control variables. So what should be your control variables so that your these two positions converge. So basically you go from that to that. So guidance model is, as I said, it's a guidance model. So it's gonna guide you. Now, if you have a guidance model, is, there, is that it? No, because even if somebody guides you, you have to implement those guidelines so that you get to that appropriate, so you can follow that particular path. So with this guidance model, what you do now is you control or your autopilot, you should command your actuators and throttle so that the role and pitch values or the state variables that are coming from guidance model as implemented are implemented in actual aircraft. So that is how the whole system works. So first and foremost, here is a very simple example. If you decide, hey, I want to score A in robotics too. So you know where you want to go. So I want to score an A. Now, how am I doing this? There are nine assignments and I'm going to get A in all these assignments. So that is your desired path. So you want to get A, A, A and all these assignments. And then what you have is you are going to track your current grade. So for an example, you get A here and all of a sudden, unfortunately, you get B here. So you can still find from the weightage what would be your predicted grade. If that is not corresponding to your final grade, then you would somehow try to get A plus and A plus in next few assignments so that finally you converge to your desired path. So once you know where you are, once you know where you want to go, and somehow you have a way to monitor where you are going, then you can implement the corrections to make sure that you reach your desired endpoint. That's what we are trying to do with this UAV. Now, before I proceed, any questions? So, so with this backdrop, I want to tell you what happens. Whenever you have an aircraft, typically aircraft, uh, particularly when the aircrafts are autonomously guided. So when the aircraft are autonomously guided, they don't do crazy maneuvers. This is something that you want to, I mean, you can program them, but for, I mean, think about it. The, the autonomous Google car, you haven't, I haven't seen any Google car drifting or I haven't seen any Google car uh, is like suddenly breaking. Or so similar to that, when you have a UAV or autonomous, Uh, aircraft, you do not do super complex maneuvers. Yes, guidance model also uses PID control or it can use the non-linear control. So it wouldn't do super complex maneuvers. 
so typically so the autopilots do not do super complex maneuvers autopilot can do some basic maneuvers and the basic maneuvers are going from point a to point b following certain path loiter following certain profile like uh, following uh, a track uh, maybe in a semi circular fashion or following a path in a triangular fashion or following a path in a rectangular fashion but you will never see autopilot doing flips or autopilot doing 4d flips or autopilot doing 8d flips but some of these uh, new uh, uavs especially the the toy level uavs uh, that can be programmed so something if you want to play with i would recommend there is an uh, a small quadcopter telo it's a quad that can be programmed for 4d flips 8d flips hand landing so you can actually place your hand and can land on your hand you can throw so and you can do this all with matlab if you want to implement a swarm control so for an example if you have one telo you have another telo and you want these both these quadcopters to perform dance then you can actually program them to do a formation flight or the swarm control so if you are working in swarming or if you are interested in formation flights formation flights or swarming telo edu is a good platform to play with so you can implement your swarming algorithms uh, and path planning algorithms uh, all those in uh, uh, matlab and flash the telo firmware with that matlab so with that said for aircrafts for aircrafts fixed wing typically you are going to have a level flight so which means the aircraft is flying straight next it's going to be a coordinated turn which means the aircraft is sort of turning and please note coordinated turn means turn with banking so aircraft say it is fly like this and then the aircraft kind of banks so here aircraft rolls and yaws at the same time and the last is something called as climb which means the aircraft is going up. so these three are very commonly used maneuvers and majority of the the path and, and at this point i what i want you to do is i want you to think about potential paths you can achieve with this level flight say for an example if you want aircraft to go from point a to point b if you want your aircraft to perform a triangle then you can have a level flight then here you can have a coordinated turn then again you can have a level flight you can have a coordinated turn you can have a level flight and you can have a coordinated turn or if you want your aircraft to go from point a to point b you can have a climb and then it can go to so most of the paths uh that or if you want to perform a figure 8 it's like two coordinated turns together if you want the aircraft to loiter you can have just the 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 coordinated turn 
if you want your aircraft to go up and down so this is nothing but the variation of climb which is a positive and negative climb so at this point i want to specify that if you have an autopilot if you have an autopilot that depending upon the path that you program so what i want to do is i want that autopilot to take my uav around a race track so what would that program do the program would actually construct waypoints and it will interpolate the path between the waypoints so it will say here this would be a level flight this would be a coordinated turn this would be a level flight and this would be a coordinated turn so i can most likely perform 90% of the standard maneuvers with these three flight modes now what we have done is we have taken a, a complex problem we want our aircraft to go from point a to point b and we have divided or, or we have expressed the problem in terms of where i want to go what should be my speed uh, or what should be my variable changes and how do i monitor those in terms of uav states and last but not least how can i achieve this path how can i do this how can i go from point a to b and come back with a very simple baseline maneuvers so think about it like building blocks so level flight coordinated turn and climb these are the the simple building blocks that you can use to construct majority of the path now that means now the problem is i want my autopilot to fly the aircraft in a level flight from point a to b coordinated turn problem is i want my aircraft to turn from point c to point d and then from point d to point c and if i have this climb problem i want my aircraft to go from e to f and from f to g so now how can i implement these three basic building blocks or these standard controlled flight maneuvers inside the autopilot to be honest with you uh, you already know cuz first and foremost if we want aircraft to follow the level flight what i need to know is i need to control the air speed i need to control the heading and i am pretty much done because if i don't pitch if i don't roll if i control if i maintain my va air speed as constant if i maintain my heading or yaw to be constant i am going to go in a straight direction now some of you may ask me what happens if my straight is not horizontal straight if my straight is something like this again so what i'm saying level flight if i just control psi if i maintain psi is equal to 0 because i recognize theta is equal to 0 and roll is equal to 0 is ensured and certain value of ba is ensured in the stabilization loop so outside stabilization what i need to do is i just have to maintain i have to make sure that my actual yaw and the major yaw is zero so that i can perform the level flight so some of you may ask me what if i want my aircraft to go in this direction this type of maneuver is fine in the case of fighter aircrafts but typically in uavs you will never see uav following this type of a path you will always see uavs going something like this so there will be climb if you want to go from point a to point c i would consider that as a climb maneuver rather than a straight line maneuver 
Okay, so now let me give you the the concept or fundamental concept for coordinated term. So so coordinated term means I want my aircraft to turn, and aircraft turning. So let me write this first and foremost in terms of uh, the 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 path angles or the path variables so let me write this first in terms of so in terms of of path variables so which means this is what you want this is what i want UAV to do. So I want UAV to maintain certain pi G divided by VG tan P cosine of chi minus psi. Once again, this is rule. This is yaw. But what I want that UAV to do is I want that UAV to maintain this. Uh, I want that UAV to maintain this coordinated turn condition. And we studied this in section 5.2. So this is this is what we discussed in section 5.2 and if you want to refresh your memory i would strongly recommend just uh, briefly take a look at the coordinated turn coordinated turn is a combination of yaw and rule but this condition has to be maintained for coordinated turn now what i want to do is I want to express this coordinated term, term rather than the variables that are path variables. So let me express this. Roll and yaw, these are UAV states. And x dot, I mean, sorry, chi dot and vg. are the path variables. A quick recap. Here is what we did. First and foremost, when we are looking at the path planning problem, we expressed the problem in terms of a path definition. And then we converted that path problem in terms of UAV states. So we define the path and what are the path parameters? Say VG, gamma, chi. These are the path definition. So VG, not VA, VG, round speed. And what I did is somehow with the relationship, I converted that to VA, psi, theta, and phi. So I converted those equations in terms of UAV parameters. So I have to do the exact same thing. Now, what you need to do is uh, the process for doing this is not very straightforward, but I will explain and you are welcome to uh, look at it. For that, we have to go all the way to chapter two. You have to go all the way back to chapter two. And in chapter two, this is the relationship that we derive. This comes from chapter two. And I think it's a lesson five or six. We said VG cosine chi cosine gamma 
sin chi cosine gamma minus sin gamma. You know this equation because this is the equation that we wrote a minute ago minus omega n omega e omega d. This is the equation that we just wrote here. So Vg and then we replace that. So this is the equation that I'm talking about. So this is equal to Pn dot Pe dot Pd dot. And I'm going to write this expression is important in terms of airspeed and the UAV states. And some of you, if you want to refer to this, this is equation 2.9. And next thing is what you want to do is you take square on both sides and have a, a constrained relationship. But at the end of the day, here is what you get. And this comes from taking the derivative of this equation. So I'm not gonna do the derivative, but I will write this expression down. This expression becomes cosine chi cosine gamma minus vg sine gamma cosine gamma minus vg cosine chi sine gamma and so i do the exact same thing here i have vg dot chi dot gamma dot and again there are three more terms and I will show you this expression in just a minute is equal to I'm going to have an expression again the matrix equation but it will involve cosine psi cosine gamma a which is actual V a multiplied by V a dot psi dot and gamma a dot. And as we know that can be replaced, gamma a can be replaced in terms of the pitch angle. And I will show you this equation in just a minute. So this equation is, you start with this and then you have the equation and then what you do, it just equate left hand side is equal to right hand side to find out, and this is the important part, relationship between Vg dot and Psi dot. And that relationship comes from, you take this expression, differentiate, that you get this relationship and all said and done. So this is our assumption. VA is commanded and it's constant. So we already have a stabilization loop that is making sure that my airspeed is constant. What that means is I get a relationship for psi dot G divided by VA tan phi. What it means is if I want my aircraft to turn, here is very important. If I want my aircraft to turn, if I know the value of my heading rates change, or so if my aircraft, I want my aircraft to turn, it means heading should change something like this. So if I draw a tangent to this circle, I'm gonna get changes in the heading and I know the time. So I know the delta T. 
So if I know phi one, if I know phi two, if I know phi three, if I know phi four, and I know delta t's. So I know the value of delta. Uh, I know the value of phi dot. For that particular phi dot, and that phi dot doesn't have to be constant. I can find out the value of roll if I keep my V A constant. My aircraft is going to turn. So this is how I would achieve the turning, and this is the crux of it. So if you want your aircraft to turn, you would maintain you first. So typically, what you have is you will provide a turn radius, and then you will have waypoints. And typically, you will say that I want my aircraft to turn at heading speed of maybe uh, ten radians per second, something like that. And based on that heading change, what you will have is you will have psi dot. From that psi dot, you will find tan phi. And what you will do is your autopilot will command phi uh, psi one. And phi one, psi two, and phi two, psi three, and phi three, and psi four, and phi four. Typically, phi one, phi two, phi three, and phi four are usually same, but depending upon the disturbances, they could be slightly different. The last part that I want to talk about in little detail is something called as Accelerated climb. So, so if you want your aircraft to go from point A to point B in this particular fashion, so here you have to look at the forces. So you have a component of gravity, which is mg. You have the lift force, and this lift force is going to act. Towards center, centrifugal, uh, centrifugal force, force, F lift times cosine of phi, and this needs to be balanced by m g gamma dot. And we looked at this accelerated climb equation in chapter five, but once you apply Newton's law, this becomes F lift. Cosine phi is equal to m v g gamma dot plus m g cosine gamma. Once again, observe you have v g, you have gamma. So these are the path variables. Now what I want to do is I want to convert somehow. I need to. I want to convert this these path variables in terms of The UAV state variables, and the most natural way to do that is G divided by V G, F L divided by M G, cosine of phi minus cosine of gamma. This gives me the expression for gamma dot. And here, what they do is they define F L divided by M G. Is something called as the load factor. So they call this as L F. And then what they do is gamma dot is equal to G divided by V G L F cosine phi minus cosine gamma. Now one thing that I want to state here that if you want a constant climb, and that's what we desire. If constant climb, gamma dot is equal to zero. What this means is zero is equal to g divided by v g l f cosine phi minus cosine gamma. Cosine v g can be expressed in terms of v a gamma can be expressed or approximated to theta. And boom, your aircraft is going to climb. So, with this, you can 
segment path into different waypoints and then you can have that aircraft uh, do certain maneuvers from waypoint a to waypoint b so i'm going to stop here